If you and your baby have been so frustrated and exhausted by short naps at daycare, at home, your little one naps for a good hour, hour and a half, two hours, and at daycare, it's 20 minutes. What do you do? In today's video, I'm going to give you some strategies that we can use at daycare to hopefully help lengthen these daycare naps. I'm Becca Campbell, your pediatric sleep consultant. Welcome to the Little Z Sleep YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe because this week it's all about daycare. And today, probably the epitome of everyone's daycare woes, short naps. I am going to walk you through some strategies that we can communicate with to our teachers and even kind of help you ease your mind about these frustrating short naps at daycare, which let's just put it out there. It's going to happen. Why? Let's dig into, first of all, like why in the world should we expect short naps at daycare? Well, it's bright, it's loud, and there's generally no form of any type of nap environment that you've created at home here at daycare. So let me just put this out there. Why would we be so concerned with our nap environment at home if at daycare it's completely different? I get this question a lot, and the answer is, we need to do anything and everything to preserve your baby's naps when they are at home. We're gonna create the best environment. When they go to daycare, it's different. And that's okay. Your baby is adaptable. They will learn to sleep at daycare and they will learn to come back home and nap at home. It generally takes about a month for a child to get used to this. But once they are napping well at daycare, they probably will have much shorter naps than they have at home. Now, none of the strategies that I'm about to share will make sense or work if your child doesn't know independent sleep habits. If they rely on rocking, pacifiers, bottles, nursing to feed to sleep, and they depend on something exterior besides themselves to put themselves to sleep, then none of these strategies are gonna work. What I'm gonna talk through today is like the foundation of my sleep e-coaching programs independent sleep for your baby. I'm talking four months and up. So now that you maybe have your feet wet at daycare or your child's been there for a while and you've maybe recently done a sleep training program, maybe mine, maybe someone else's, here's what we need to ask the teachers. I want you to ask them, can they do a nap time routine? A nap time routine is a great way to just cue your baby that it's time to go to sleep. Sometimes a nap routine looks like change the diaper, zip up the sleep sack, sleep sack, say night night. There you go, nap time routine. Check, done, in the crib, good night. Other times a nap time routine could include a feed, but I want you to make sure that your nap time routine that you do at home, ask them if they can just copy and paste it and do it at daycare. A nap time routine is not 30 minutes. So they probably could take two to five minutes to just cue your baby up for a nap. So always ask them, this kind of relates to that first video, right? When I set you up with all those things to ask to make sure we can have a good setup. But when it's actually time to create better naps, to try to maybe see if they can sleep longer than 20 or 30 minutes, I wanna see, can they do the nap time routine that you do at home? Can they do it there at daycare before any nap for your child? And if they can, and the answer really should be yes because it's short and sweet. If they can do that, what we're aiming for is that the child will be cued like, oh yes, I recognize this. This is the same cues I get at home. It's time to go to sleep here, just like it is at home. So they go, go get into their crib and they put themselves to sleep within five or 10 minutes. Once the child falls asleep from that nap that they initially put them down for with that nap time routine, should the baby wake up really soon, 15, 20, 30 minutes, where they're really just getting one sleep cycle and it would be nice if they get a few more in, maybe one, maybe two more sleep cycles. This won't always happen, but I do wanna ask the daycare teacher, hey, can you not rush right over? And what I mean by this, I've never met a daycare teacher who would be okay or has said like, oh sure, I'll let your child just be for, 10, 15, 20 minutes to see if they wanna go back to sleep. If the baby's crying, they're usually gonna go ahead and get them. I understand that. It's a room full of babies. If we can minimize the crying, the better, right? But I'm wondering if we can just wait a few minutes. If maybe your baby wakes up, sits up, looks around the room, sees other kids playing, and they are, they're like, oh, yep, I'm done here. I'm ready to go play with my friends. Okay, let's get them up and, and go ahead and move on with our day. But sometimes the baby may just wake up, look around, decide, all right, I wanna go back to sleep and then go back. So I would ask them to do the nap time routine 
Once the baby goes to sleep, should they wake up early, can you just wait a few minutes before you go get them? That can be helpful to see if the baby wants to decide to go back to sleep or not. If they do decide to go back to sleep, yes! We're gonna total this inside of our nap time. And I would definitely love to make sure the final thing, this is pretty much every daycare will do this, but because I told you in the first video to get a schedule going, make sure that they are giving you accurate reads on how long the baby is sleeping. Sometimes this is maybe more towards the older ages, but I definitely have seen situations where a daycare teacher might write two hours, where it was really like an hour and a half or it was just two hours for the room, but your child only napped for 45 minutes. So I do wanna kind of gauge how long your child is sleeping. Again, I, I am so thankful we have amazing daycare teachers. This is not a knock on that at all. I would just ask, especially if you're sleep training during this time, to make sure we get an accurate reading on how long your child is actually napping at daycare. Maybe you are at a daycare provider where they have cameras where you can watch and things like that, which is pretty cool. Don't take time off of your work to, you know, track and be obsessed with your baby's sleep. That's why we have loving daycare teachers. But it is just nice to know an accurate reading of how much sleep they had so we can possibly move into an early bedtime, which is a video coming up this week. Now, short naps at daycare, they are going to happen. We can't completely erase them from ever occurring because let's go back to the original message. It's bright, it's loud, they're gonna just sleep one sleep cycle, wake up and be done with it. But if your daycare teacher can implement a nap time routine, if they can allow the child to fall asleep independently, just like you've worked on at home, if they can just hold off and not rush over to pick up your child and say, all right, you're done with your nap. And if they can accurately write down how much sleep your child is getting, this will help so much. It can help cue your child that there's no immediate gratification, so I'm gonna go back to sleep now. And it can help you understand at the end of the day, wow, look at this day of like only 20 minute naps, we need to go ahead and move into an early bedtime. So this is just going to be such great information and great strategies that connect your home life to the daycare life, which is really wonderful because all of these should work in sync together. And if we can see that success, it will mean so much to you and your family. Now get ready, tomorrow's video, I'm going to equip you with what's next. If they've only had a day full of 20 or 30 minute naps, what do we do for bedtime, Becca? It's too long, it's too much of a stretch, and there's no way I can get my kid to bed at 5.30. Relax, I'll get you there. We'll cover it in tomorrow's video. Sweet dreams, see you tomorrow.